In this video, I'm going to look at the actual Bell inequality. So remember in the previous video, I said that we were working on kind of a toy model of the Bell inequality. In this one, we're going to find the actual inequality that Bell came to. As I said, it, it amounts to the same thing, but it's always kind of interesting and nice to see the actual sort of historical thing. And this will also lead us into what's called the CHSH inequality, which is just building upon the Bell inequality. But anyway, to look at the inequality Bell actually came to, we need to consider what's called the correlation coefficient, which we will put like this with a C, then our two directions here in parentheses. And this is the expected value of the product of the two measurement outcomes when measurements are made along these directions of the two particles. Since the product of the outcome is either this, so if it's plus plus and minus minus, then we get one, and if they are opposites like this, then we get minus one. The correlation coefficient is there for this right here. So these are our probabilities of getting a spin up and spin down in each of these two directions. Quantum mechanics predicts that we will have, and this is using this trig identity here, that our correlation coefficient here will end up just being equal to the negative cosine of the angle between them. When theta is the angle between these, such that if it's equal to zero degrees, then our correlation will be negative one. And if it's equal to 90 degrees, then it's zero. And this makes sense because in this one, it's anti-correlated, which is what we would expect because if we have a particle that's spin up, then the other one has to be spin down. And so that's perfectly anti-correlated. And so then the latter one here also makes sense because they are perfectly anti-correlated. So say if particle one is spin up in the z direction, then there is zero correlation with particle two in the x direction because it's going to be 50-50. So we're measuring particle one in the z direction. Our particle two will have a 50-50 chance of being up or down in the x direction. And so it's completely anti-correlated. There's no way to sort of predict what the x could be given if we know what the z is. For local hidden variables, we can use our table here from the previous video, so we're looking at the spin of particle one in three different directions and the spin of particle two in three different directions where we see if the particle one is in the plus one in the a direction, then particle two has to be negative one in the a direction and so on and so forth. So for particle one and particle two, it's always just anti-correlated for each of those. So we see that our correlation coefficient here for each of these is just these. So the correlation coefficient for A and B is equal to this, for A and C is equal to this, and for B and C is equal to this third one here. And so we can see, for instance, that this inequality here, so this is what's called a trivial inequality because we're just putting things together and it has to be the case. But we can see that this works if we actually plug things in for this. So we plug this in minus this, then if we have all of these adding together plus this, we sort of cancel these out. You can look through my math if you want, but we end up getting this. But this inequality is just this right here. And this one is actually the original Bell inequality. And so again, the greatest violation is at theta equals pi over three, which is 60 degrees where we will have that for A and B that we end up with negative one half. For A and C, it's positive one half. And for B and C, it's negative one half. But yeah, like I said, this is the original Bell inequality here. So you'll see this one or something that looks very much like this in his original paper. And so this gives us this. If we plug these in to this inequality up here, we have minus one half, minus one half here, but we're getting the absolute value of that less than or equal to one minus a half. But we can see that this is a contradiction because one is definitely not less than or equal to one half. And so this is our major violation here when theta is at 60 degrees. We could also do the trivial inequality here. 
and this is just equivalent to this. So now we have this plus this on this left side of the inequality, and then one minus this on the right side. We're up here, it's this minus this on the left side, and then one plus this on the right side. Where this primed A here, so now we're looking at a primed A on each of these, can be, but does not have to be, in the same direction as our previous A up here. We say the inequality is trivial, and I'm putting this here because I always kind of hate in these like math books when they say that something is trivial. So just to kind of explain why we call it trivial, for any positive x and y, which is positive being the case for probabilities, we will have this. So the absolute value of y minus x is less than or equal to y plus x. And so we could do this for sort of any combinations of our f up here, of our different frequencies up here. But of course, we are, for practical purposes, going to be interested in the ones that are equivalent to our correlation coefficients, such as what we got in this inequality right here and this inequality right there. And so if we add these together, these two inequalities, we get what is called the CHSH inequality. And so the CHSH is just the first letters of these last names here for John Clauser, Michael Horn, Abner Shimini, and Richard Holt. And so we get this right here. So we just added this one right here to this one right here. So remember from our two inequalities up here. So this one and this one right here. So we add those together. And then this has to be less than or equal to 2 because we now have this 1 plus this 1, which is 2. And then this minus this just cancel out. So this has to be less than or equal to 2 if we are to have local hidden variables. So now we can have Alice in one wing of her experiment choosing between A and A prime while Bob is in the other wing choosing between B and C. And so we can set it up so it looks like this. So we have A and A prime orthogonal to each other, then B and C orthogonal to each other, where B is 45 degrees between A and A prime, then C is 45 degrees away from A prime, which ends up being 135 degrees away from A. And so when we calculate these, so our 45 degrees here and our 135 degrees, we get these correlation coefficients for A, B, A, C, A prime, B, and A prime, C. So negative 1 over 2 squared for three of them, and then positive 1 over 2 squared for this one right here. And then putting them together into this and so what we want to do is find what these act, what this actually equals when we put these into this equation right here. So we'll be solving for x. We put each of those in here, and so we have that equal to x. We get this. We use that 1 over the square root of 2 is equal to the two, square root of 2 over 2. And so we end up with this right here. So that's 2 times the square root of 2 equals x, and so that equals about 2.83. Remember, we said for local hidden variables, we need this to be less than or equal to 2. But what we're finding when we put in our quantum mechanical predictions is that this would actually be about 2.83, so about 40% larger than the anticipated value if we have local hidden variables. And it turns out that experiments using an equivalent light polarization system confirm this. This is from a, an early experiment here where they found that the quantum mechanical prediction is actually the correct one. And so it says here that the, this is the correlation of the polarizations of the light. And what they say is the dotted curve here is not a fit to the data, but quantum mechanical predictions for the actual experiment. And so these bolder dots here are their actual data. And then this thin dotted line is what the quantum mechanical predictions would be. And what they see is that their experimental data falls right onto this line that is predicted for quantum mechanics. So the above is an early experiment, as I said, by Aspect et al. They found that the CHSH coefficient was this. 
So 2.697 plus or minus 0.15, which recall, we have to have the correlation coefficient be less than or equal to 2 for any local hidden variables and about 2.83 for non-local quantum mechanics. So this is a lot closer to what we would expect for a non-local quantum mechanics. There have been many subsequent experiments which have adjusted for various potential mitigating factors brought up against the above experiment, such as parameter independence, which I'm going to talk about in detail in the next video. And all of those subsequent experiments have also confirmed these results. So they have also confirmed that the non-local quantum mechanics is the right version of quantum mechanics, that we do not have any local hidden variables. But anyway, that was everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Again, I've been saying this in a lot of my videos. I do have a Patreon if you want to donate a few dollars since making these videos and and researching and doing the light editing that I do can be somewhat time consuming. If you're getting something out of these videos and you have any a few dollars to spare and you want to donate to my Patreon, you can go ahead and do that. The link is in the description down below. But anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and I will see you in the next one.